Are you overweight? Do you have low mood and are lacking energy? Do you wake up in the morning with back pain? Do you consume seed oils? Do you ever consider that perhaps these are all linked? You see, there's so much controversy around seed oils, their impact on our health, but yet so much confusion. So today we're gonna to get to the bottom of it using science. If you're new around here, my name is Adam. I'm a performance nutritionist with a graduate level degree in nutrition, and currently I'm doing a doctorate. And on this channel, we help you get fitter, stronger, and healthier using science. Before we dive in, you really need to understand what seed oils actually are. And essentially, they are the oil from the seed of the plant rather than the fruit of the plant itself. And they're used in cooking and commercial settings a lot because they have a high smoke point and they're pretty much tasteless. You probably even use them at home or consume them daily. They include things like vegetable oils, safflower oil, sunflower oil, rapeseed oil or in the US known as canola oil. And these are rich in a type of fatty acid called linoleic acid, which belongs to the omega-6 family. Now, omega-6s are typically demonized because they are believed to have detrimental impacts on our health, but predominantly raised inflammation and heart disease. Now, obviously that wouldn't be good because heart disease is the number one killer worldwide. You'll commonly find anti seed oil activists in the biohacking community, on health podcasts and other places like that. And and they create a very captivating story. The idea that seed oils were originally created for machinery and things like that, and now they've been gradually brought into the food supply and are wrecking havoc with your health. It is all very convincing. But where did this all start? You see, in the 1960s, researchers in Sydney, Australia, conducted a multi-year study with almost 450 men. They had two groups. One group of men consumed their normal diet, and the other group of men consumed more seed oils through safflower oil and safflower margarine. And what they found was that after a few years, the group that consumed more seed oils had higher levels of cardiovascular disease. Case closed, seed oils are terrible for your health and they're quite literally killing you. Well, not so fast. You see, during the 1950s and 60s and 70s, margarines often contained up to 40% of their fat from something known as trans fats or hydrogenated fats. Now, trans fats are banned in many countries. Most countries don't use them much anymore. And nobody really, it is in disagreement that trans fats are just terrible for your health. But back then, people didn't know any better and trans fats were a good, cheaper, more efficient replacement for animal fats. In fact, in the 1950s, a lot of American soldiers in the Korean War consumed high levels of trans fats because trans fats were great at preserving foods on the front line. And what they found was that when these soldiers had autopsies after they died in action, they found that almost 80% of these men had thickening of their artery walls and these men were only in their 20s and 30s. Now compare that to 50 years later during the Iraq war when we knew a lot more about how diet influences heart disease, only 10% of soldiers who had autopsies done had this level of thickening in their arteries. So this basically completely messes up the certainty that seed oils were the problem back in that original study and not the trans fats that had been consumed in the margarines. There is no doubt that we have greater access to food and healthcare, yet people are becoming more unhealthy and fatter over time. And over that same period, our seed oil consumption has also grown. And people like simple explanations to complex problems. If you're not in shape and you've struggled with your health, you've tried different diets, probably lost a little bit of hope, Seed oils are a really easy target. You can easily buy into the narrative that the mainstream is wrong, they're purposely trying to keep you sick and make you fat to make money. And you know what? There are certainly aspects of the food industry and the food production line that keep you consuming more hyper palatable foods because they're driven by profits. The saying goes though that good science is able to be reproduced, meaning that if we originally saw issues with consuming seed oils, then further science down the road would be able to reproduce the same results. And the great thing is we have more research. Research in mice does show in fact that some levels of seed oils cause oxidative stress, but I assume you're not a mouse and you probably care more about human research, right? And listening to health podcasts or wherever you consume your information on seed oils, they do create a very compelling picture about how A might affect B, which could lead to C, and it all sounds pretty scary. The processing of seed oils all sounds so unnatural. The adding of hexane solvents, the extraction process, the bleaching, and the first thing you think of is industrial chemicals used for factories or cleaning products. And it all sounds pretty convincing when the person has a lot of conviction and to you it just seems like a foreign language. But when you are driving your car, 
you don't really care much about the potential ways the pistons and the combustion gases all work together to get the car going. You care about the car actually driving. And here's the great thing, we have lots of outcome research that's not based on mechanisms on CDOs in humans. Like not speculation or interesting stories, actual research showing their actual impact on human health. Now the first claim is often that CDO causes inflammation or lipid peroxidation. But when we look at actual research, the claims against CDOs are nowhere to be found. This 2017 meta-analysis of randomized control trials found that the omega-6 linoleic acid had no significant impacts on blood concentration markers of inflammatory markers. This other paper looking at lipid peroxidation found that compared to milk fat, there was no difference in oxidation outcomes on sunflower oil or canola oil. But what about other fats? When it comes to nutrition, we always have to ask the question compared to what? For example, I can choose not to consume caffeine or to drink alcohol or to smoke cigarettes, but I can't choose not to eat, or at least not for very long or it would end up very well. Those who are typically against seed oils will often suggest that you replace those seed oils with animal fats, such as butter, red meat, etc., which are high in saturated fats. So we have made analysis looking at replacing saturated fat with the seed oil, canola oil. And actually, this meta-analysis showed that LDL cholesterol or bad cholesterol was reduced by 25 milligrams per deciliter. Now that can literally change someone from being high to optimal. And this other analysis of the most robust trials in the area found that replacing saturated fat with predominantly seed oils reduced cardiovascular disease by about 30%. Now this makes a lot of sense because your polyunsaturated fat to saturated fat ratio is the most important nutritional predictor of your heart disease risk. In fact, in the 1960s, Finland, which is a country in Scandinavia, they're, it's pretty cold up there and it's expensive and they're good at hockey. They held three records. They had the highest saturated fat intake in the world, the highest blood levels of cholesterol in the world, and unfortunately they had the highest levels of death due to cardiovascular disease. So in 1972, the public health department in Finland set out a campaign to try and change this. And although the campaign aimed to reduce things such as smoking, obesity, and saturated fat, by 2007, BMI had actually increased and smoking rates had remained relatively the same. But saturated fat intake, primarily through butter, which was the main way that Finnish people had consumed saturated fat, had decreased by half, and subsequently their heart disease deaths reduced by 80%. Now critics will say this is observational, but we have lots of randomized control trials showing how LDL cholesterol impacts your risk of getting heart disease. So the bros just seem to have it backwards. There's a narrative that our ancestors only ate butters and ribeyes on the African savanna, therefore we should too. But even that position has flaws. One, because our ancestors didn't care about optimizing their health or their performance. And number two, our ancestors, according to anthropological research, actually ate way less saturated fat than we do today. The whole ancestral arguments are just a house of cards, but that's a video for a different day. But look, people can lie or they can make up what they eat or they, f or they can forget what they eat. It's actually pretty common criticism of nutrition science. But hold on, we actually have research looking at tissue levels of linoleic acid, usually from blood samples. This paper looked at the tissue levels in almost 70,000 participants across 13 countries. And what they found was the highest levels of linoleic acid was associated with a 23% reduction in cardiovascular disease compared to the lowest. We see similar results in a Finnish cohort with the highest lowest tissue levels associated with a 46% reduction in cardiovascular disease risk and the evidence for CDOs just keeps building and building. Honestly, there is tons of it. It just becomes really, really difficult for anyone to claim with any solid evidence that CDOs are bad for your health. Usually it just comes down to a few mice studies, then ultimately breaks down into personal attacks. At least that's what I've experienced. When creating this video, I genuinely looked for videos from people like Paul Saladino or High Intensity Health who are both really against CDOs so that I could like come up with arguments against what they were saying or at least see what they were saying. But their evidence is always a narrative based on reviews or articles or speculation or opinion pieces, but never on randomized controlled trials or actually solid science. They just choose to ignore all the meta-analysis, all these RCTs, saying something contrarian 
to get views. And you know what, it worked because both of them have almost 1 million subscribers on YouTube. Here's the issue. It's not that seed oils or avoiding them is gonna cause you issues other than practical ones. I mean, just good luck never trying to consume them. I personally consume a lot of olive oil and fatty fish, which is great for your health. And I do consume some saturated fats in small amounts as well, mainly through red meat. I'm also not advocating that you go out and eat junk food all the time. That's not a good idea. And you probably know that already. But if you are now purposely avoiding seed oils and adding in more saturated fats like butter, lard, fatty red meat, then you're blatantly increasing your risk of the very thing that you're trying to avoid. Look, I'm from Ireland. We have the best butter in the world. Other countries call it grass fed butter. We literally call it butter and it's absolutely delicious, but it's not good to cook everything in it. It's not good for you in high amounts. I know this might sound confusing and that's the thing. Nutrition basics are simple but nutrition science can be complex. Just because someone has the ability to research on Google doesn't mean they have the ability to actually interpret what that research means. Anybody with a computer can go and say, well, research found and then just talk a load of nonsense. Be wary of that like 21 year old overconfident personal trainer who thinks he has all the answers because he has visible abs. Understanding how a calorie deficit works is not the same as being able to understand nutrition science. And I know because when I was 21, I did my first bodybuilding show and I thought I had the whole world figured out. The whole seed oils or toxic brigade are typically just misinformed and quite frankly, ignorant personal trainers or self-professed gurus. They just parrot what each other says because they typically don't have any scientific literacy and they just want a soundbite for Twitter so that they can make social media posts. It's classic groupthink, although if you consume seed oils, they're ironically going to be the one that's calling you a sheeple. Rarely, if ever, you'll see nutrition scientists or researchers claim that seed oils are bad for you because honestly, the evidence is just so overwhelmingly strong. So Joe Rogan, I love your podcast, man, but this was just a real airball. If you wanna understand the key areas that you need to focus on in order to optimize your health, your performance, and your physique, then check out this video that I made here. And if you want to work with me directly, one-to-one -one on improving these areas, then check out the link below.